still in Texas. Okay, so I wanted to cover something. I did a video. It's time to revisit a video I did a while back. It's called The uh, Stony Silence of the Prophets. Uh, and I, I'll get into it here in just a minute, but just to kind of recap some things and, and uh, revisit some things, um, I think you've probably noticed that a lot of uh, programs like mine we talk a lot about Israel and what's going on in Israel. I've kind of backed off a little bit, not because I'm not totally interested in it. Um, I just think there's other channels that do a better job than I do. Uh, Christian Homestead, Jared, he covers a lot. In fact, it was kind of funny because when I, I, I had a channel and... Um, Somehow, some way, Jared got a hold of me, and he he called me, and he was very upset with some of the things I was covering and talking about, and Israel was one of those, and that we don't really hear about them from the church, and so, you know, why why are you talking about this kind of stuff? Why are you saying this kind of stuff? Why are you thinking this kind of stuff? And and I was already you know looking at Israel three sixty five and just other channels. Uh, one for Israel was probably one of the first ones I started looking at. They, they were Messianic Jews, but um, just, just you know, studying, having gone to Israel, um, I think in 2018, um, and then subsequent visits after that, um, really started making me realize that most things surrounding the second coming of the Savior really involve and revolve around Jerusalem and the nation and the country of Israel, the state of Israel. So it's just been interesting to see how that evolves. And yet, we don't really hear the brethren speak much about events taking place in Jerusalem, in Israel, on the Temple Mount, you know, this kind of thing. The Red Heifers, Israel 365 has a great article on the on the Red Heifers, uh, which are actually from the, uh, the town, the city, the ancient city of Shiloh. So when I went there, um, I guess it would have been about, a, it was October of, what would it be, 20... 22 October of 2022 maybe we were there the, the city of Shiloh it's amazing this is where the Ark of the Covenant was for over 300 years it's where um, uh, obviously the tabernacle as well the traveling tabernacle was there this is where we have Eli the prophet Samuel the prophet Samuel that came actually not the prophet Eli but he was the guardian of uh, and the caretaker of the ark. And this is where the ark was allowed to, to be taken by, by the army of Israel to fight against the Philistines, and they lost, and the Philistines captured the ark. We actually went to the valley where that ark came back driven on a cart, you know, by a cow, oxen, and brought uh, right to David, and uh, so, so the Israelites got the ark back. But Eli was not a good, not the best example, let's say, in his sons in taking care of things. But this, this place of Shiloh is so significant. And this is where they're keeping the red heifers. And you can read all about, most of you probably know the significance of the sacrifice of the red heifers using their ashes for the purification in preparation to build the, the what most people are calling the third temple on the Temple Mount. So this is this is exciting stuff. And and then you have the um, Temple Institute that you can look up and they have all the implementations and everything. But um, and, and just one more thing about Israel and traveling right now. Um, I got a really good email from Pastor Todd Fink. This is who Sue and I traveled with the last time we went to Israel. Uh, amazing, amazing. And he has, 
he has a, a YouTube channel called Holy Land Sight. Holy Land Sight. Really, really good. I'll put the link to it there. Um, and you can uh, you can check out his website, but or check out his YouTube channel, but also check out his website because he has some really good information on traveling to Israel. So right now, right now, if, if a person decided to go to Israel right now, um, the tours, the places you could go would um, be pretty inclusive. He said there's three places that they would normally visit that, that you wouldn't be able to right now. That would be Caesarea Philippi, very top northern part of Israel there, um, close to the Golan Heights, close to the Syrian border, close to the Lebanon border. So with, with Hezbollah and the things and stuff going on there, they, that wouldn't be a place to visit. But Galilee, all, the, all those places around Galilee uh, would still be on. The other two places would be further south, and that would be uh, Hebron. Actually, before I get to Hebron, a little further south, but still like in the Samaria region, uh, uh, the ancient city of Shechem. I've been there once. It's amazing. This is where Jacob's well is in between the amount of blessing and curse. And uh, it's an amazing place, but there's it's a hotbed. It's a hotbed. So that wouldn't be a place that you'd visit. And then, and then south of Jerusalem uh, would be Hebron is a place that probably wouldn't go at this time. But other than that, and, and there's so much to see, and there's so many awesome things that if I were a person traveling or wanting to go to Israel, I would do it. Now, the, the trip that Sue and I are going to be hosting uh, with Legacy Tours this fall, it's full now, but, but you can get on a waiting list and see if some, something happens. So I'm foreseeing uh, good things happening. And, and if you're thinking of a way to support Israel, um, buy things that are from Israel. You know, I, we do the Arts of Box on this channel. In fact, I'll put a link on for the Arts of Box. There's a new one coming out soon. Uh, th these are boxes, gift boxes made up kind of on a subscription basis, if you will. You can buy individual boxes as well, but um, that, that usually um, have a theme of a region of Israel or uh, a season of Israel. And the local artisans and craftsmen and things, they put this box together and it really helps and blesses Israel. And we know if we bless Israel, the Lord will bless us. So this is, this is, uh, that's just a little information on traveling to Israel, if you're at all interested. Uh, in fact, Todd Fink has one going in May. So this would be after the spring uh, festivals and feasts. Um, you kind of have to time things around either before or after those, those, and then you have the ones in the fall. Because that, that's usually when things can can escalate a little bit. But in all honesty, I feel much safer in Israel than many places in the United States. <laughs> many places in Utah uh, where, where we live. Uh, right now we're in Texas, of course. But anyway, um, but on his website, he has, he has openings on that, um, which you would, you would be blessed to go. Um, it's, it's an amazing experience. Uh, he's not, uh, Todd Fink is not LDS. He is a pastor. Most of his ministry he does in Mexico, but he is, he and his wife, his family, they are the best of the best. And he knows the Holy Land, unlike anybody else I've ever been around. And it, it would be a huge blessing if, if you could go. Of course, we'd love you to go with us in the fall, but right now that's full. But anyway, um, think of that. Uh, think of that. And I'll put a link to his um, YouTube channel, and then maybe you can navigate to, uh, through that to, to get to his website and his trips because they're, they're, they're the real deal. Now, back to this idea of 
why maybe we don't hear from our leaders about Israel. Now, I've quoted this so many times, I don't have it with me right now, but the, the, the April 2020, back then it was the ensign, the April 2020 ensign, President Nelson uh, has a article in there about the future of the church and uh, preparing for the second coming of the Lord. And it's fascinating. And there he does touch a lot on. He says he said that the Savior will will um, be in the it, it, it will be in Jerusalem. He he will rule from there. There he will rule from. And he said there'll be two sites: one in 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 the new world and the new Jerusalem, and one in the old world, the old Jerusalem. But the one that he will rule from will be the old Jerusalem, which is very significant. And it makes me want to get into section 45 of the Doctrine and Covenants here for just a little bit. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about some of these things of where this land is and what, what some of these things mean, in my opinion. Um, and most of it centers around Israel and Jerusalem. But we need to talk about why perhaps the, the brethren, if you will, leaders of the church don't really spend a lot of time talking about red heifers, third temples, uh, uh, Armageddon, the battle of Armageddon, the Ezekiel wars, all these things that are focused, the, the, the savior coming on the Mount of Olives and it being split in two. Most of what we hear about has to do with the here and now spreading the gospel, gathering scattered Israel on both sides of the veil, um, you know, all those, all those kind of things and, and not much focus. And, and why, why wouldn't there be a focus on that? I, I have a couple of thoughts and, and ideas on that, on that subject. Um, I need to give a little bit of background. So I, I mentioned previously, I did a, a video and if, if you want, you can check it out. It was about a year ago. It's the stony silence of the prophets. If you look up the def definition of stony silence, it's it's like looking uh, at at them, at the prophets, just just in uh, like you're disinterested, you, you're stony silent in even listening or trying to understand what they're what they're saying, and we talk about the prophets being stoned as a as a time uh, period of the second coming and also persecution of the saints. Well, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna talk about that in this video. But if you think of stony silence in a sense, that is stoning the prophets. It's stoning them into silence, stoning them into silence. So because of, of how society is and how members of the church are in general, it, it has a tendency to silence the prophets into stony silence. We're actually stoning them. It's, it's a thought. It's an idea. So we're not picking up a stone and throwing it at them as they did in the past when they didn't want to hear the words of a prophet. But we're so indifferent and so indignant to what the prophet might say, it, it puts them into silent mode. Okay. And I think a lot of this has to do with what's going on in Israel. Think of the anti-Semitic um, pressure uh, today in our universities, businesses, uh, throughout the world, the hatred towards Israel and its people. Um, you, you almost <laughs> have to be, it, it, it's like, it's like getting, you know, banned off YouTube or, uh, you know, some other thing because you say this or you say that. That is the type of thing that you have to be careful with. And if, if, the, if the church and the church leaders were, say, pro-Israel, th think of what that would do. Think of what that would do. So we go outside of that uh, to find out, to find out on our own.
Now, some some people would argue, and this this is where I was getting it. This is this is what what years ago, and I, nothing against Jared. He's uh, and and um, Christian Homestead. I'm actually plugging his channel. He's awesome, and he just. Um, I don't know how much homesteading he does because he puts out so many videos. I very seldom get a chance to watch most, but I, I, I check in once in a while. And he's amazing in his research and his spreadsheets. But it, it was, you know, at one time it was, it was critical to, to be mentioning anything that wasn't produced and put out by the church. And yet much of his content and much content of other uh, LDS YouTubers goes to towards Israel and what's going on there. And I think it's just a process. It's just a process because the scriptures are just full of focusing on that. And I want to also show that it's good for us to go out other sources to find things. Uh, it's, it's really what we're supposed to do. So... Let's go to the Doctrine and Covenants section 45, and I want to read a few verses here. This is uh, uh, starting in verse 37. Ye look and behold the fig trees, and ye see them with your eyes, and ye say when they begin to shoot forth, and their leaves are yet tender, the summer is now nigh at hand. This is how you look for signs, right? Even so it shall be in that day when they shall see all these things, then shall they know that the hour is nigh. And it shall come to pass that he that feareth me shall be looking forth for the great day of the Lord to come. Even for the signs, and this is plural, the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. And they shall see signs and wonders for they shall be shown forth in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. And they shall behold blood, fire, vapors of smoke. And before the day of the Lord shall come, the sun shall be darkened and the moon be turned to blood, be turned into blood and the stars fall from heaven. Now listen to this. And the remnant shall be gathered unto this place. Now where is this place? Well, you have to go back and previously read what this prophecy is about, is about the apostles asking the Savior about the signs of the times. And it's talking specifically about Israel. It's this place. It's this place is Israel. It's not uh, where Joseph Smith was, was receiving this vision at the time. This is a... This is a uh, an inspired version of Matthew 24, basically, okay? And the remnant shall be gathered unto this place, Jerusalem, Israel, and then they shall look for me, and behold, I will come, and they shall see me in the clouds of heaven, clothed with power and great glory, with all the holy angels. And he that watches, we're watchers, right? Not for me, shall be cut off. If we are not looking and watching for these signs, we will be cut off. By cut off, we won't have the information. We won't see the things that are going. That's why it's so critical that we watch and we look for every resource. Okay. Now listen to this. This is this next verse is very key. I picked this up. I, I don't think I really realized this, but before the arm of the Lord shall fall, judgment, destruction of the wicked, in my opinion. An angel shall sound the trump, his trump, and the saints that have slept shall come forth to meet me in the clouds. Now, this is very significant. So before there's judgment, before the arm of the Lord is revealed and the destruction of the wicked, the resurrection of the dead will happen. And at the at simultaneous will be the quickening of the Spirit. You can read that in section 88, uh, verse 94, 5, and 6, 94, 95, 96, kind of in that area. Um, so this is, this, is a, this is the rapture of those that are still living, or quickening, we call it in the church. Uh, it could be being caught up. But also the resurrection of the, the first, the, the, of, the, of the first, uh, the morning of the first resurrection, 
happens before, before the arm of the Lord is revealed. Very key. This is where God gets his armies. This is where Christ has his army, our resurrected beings and quickened spirits. So can you imagine the legions and legions? <clears throat> Just got goosebumps. Okay, so again, verse 45, but before the arm of the Lord shall fall, and, and that's clearly the destruction of the wicked. An angel shall sound his trump, and the saints that have slept shall come forth to meet me in the cloud. So this is the Savior speaking. This is so cool. Wherefore, if ye have slept in peace, blessed are you. For as you now be behold me and know that I am, even so shall ye come unto me, and your souls shall live, and your redemption shall be perfected. And the saints shall come forth from the four quarters of the earth. So everywhere. Then, verse 47. And, and, and 48. These, these are two critical verses that kind of tie in where this land is. Okay. Then shall the arm of the Lord fall upon the nations. Oh, behave. And then shall the Lord set his foot upon this mount. So this mount is the Mount of Olives. So this gives the this gives the location of where all this is going to take place. This is all about Israel. This is all about Jerusalem and that area. Okay, uh, shall follow. Uh, the Lord will set His foot upon the, this mount, and it shall cleave in twain. And and you can go to Zechariah. I think it's twelve or fourteen, uh, and read all about that. Right. And the earth shall tremble and reel to and fro, and the heavens shall, shall shake. And the Lord shall utter his voice, and all the ends of the earth shall hear it. And the nations of the earth shall mourn, and they that have laughed shall see their, their folly. And uh, it's, it's probably good to, to read on in that because it's so good. But so, so we have the place and the timing. So we have events that lead up, signs, plural, not the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. The sign of the coming of the Son of Man is the Son of Man is Christ coming. But the signs preceding that are all these things in turmoil. And there's a very good argument that these things are taking place right now. Okay, right now. Signs in heaven and earth, and smoke, and vapors of smoke, and all kinds of things. Okay, now, let's, let's, uh, let's go to, um, uh, let, let's go to third Nephi. I think this is critical, and I covered this in the stony silence of the prophets, um, a video I did about a year ago, and, you know, if you want to go back and listen to that, uh, I cover a lot of this, but but Third Nephi chapter six. So this is right before. This is uh, probably it says around 26 A.D. So we got a few years before Christ uh, coming and visiting the Americas, and and just listen to the preface of this chapter. The Nephites prosper. Pride, wealth, and class distinctions are, arise. The church is rent with dissensions. Satan leads the people in open rebellion. Many prophets cry repentance and are slain. Their, their murderers conspire to take over the government. Okay, let's, let's, let's read just a little bit in this and see if we can't find some similarities as to what's going on today. Um, and it came to pass that there were many cities built anew, and there were many old cities repaired, and there were many highways cast up, and many roads made, which led from city to city, and from land to land, and from place to place. And thus passed away the twenty and eighth year, and the people had continual peace. Sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? But it came to pass in the twenty and ninth year, so, so now we're, we're already between 20, uh, A.D. 29 and 30 right now, as we're reading in chapter 6. Uh, there began to be some dis dis disputings among the people, and some were lifted up unto pride 
and boasting because of their exceedingly great riches. Yea, even unto great persecutions. Now this gets into the persecutions. Now, where the saints are persecuted. Uh, quite often we think, well, that's just not happening right now in, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. For the most part, we're not being persecuted at all. Um, there are Christians in other countries that are being persecuted. But, and you could, you could see that there could be persecutions here and there, but for the most part, we as saints, we go, we go and worship and, and do whatever. Let's see where this persecution's come coming from. For there were many merchants in the land and also many lawyers and many officers. And the people began to be distinguished by ranks according to their riches and their chances for learning. Yea, some were ignorant because of their poverty and others did receive great learning because of their riches. Some were lifted up in pride and others exceedingly humble. Some did return railing for railing while others would receive railing and persecution and all manner of affliction and would not turn and revile again but were humble and penitent before god and thus there became a, a great inequality in all the land insomuch that the church began to be broken up oh this is all about the church this is all about the church at first we're thinking, oh, these poor people and, and the outsiders, the non-believers, the non-Christians, if you will, were persecuting. But no, this, okay, so let's keep reading. Um, and, and thus there became a great inequality of the land, blah, 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 okay. Uh, and broken up in all the land, save it were among a few of the Lamanites who were converted let me start over again, verse 14. And thus there became a great inequality in all the land, insomuch that the church began to be broken up. Yea, insomuch that in the 30th year, the church was broken up in all the land, save it were among a few of the Lamanites who were converted unto the true faith, and they would not depart from it. So here we have the distinction between a church and true faith. And see, this is what we talk about all the time, isn't it? We talk about the the political side or the government side of the church or the, the corporate side. And, and that became very divided, very broken up. But, but those that had the true faith stayed solid. So this is really good. And I'm gonna go, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read some other, uh, one other one before we finish here, but uh, that, that even nails it down even further. Um, and they would not depart from it, for they were firm and steadfast and immovable, willing with diligence to keep the commandments of the Lord. Okay, that's the key. Keep the commandments of the Lord. Don't try to create your own commandments. Don't try to have a special class for yourself by class, a distinction. Like, I'm this alpha, letter of the alphabet, so you need to comply to me doctrine of, of Christ, not me submitting to the will of God. Now, the cause of this iniquity of the people was that Satan had great power unto the stirring up of the people to do all manner. Okay, so so here here it is. This is really, there, there's like five, five elements or six elements here of how Satan was stirring up the people. And, and really, this is like the the ingredients that you would put into a pot and stir, the ingredients of apostasy. Okay, so Satan had great power unto stirring up, isn't that great, of the people to do all manner of iniquity, so that's one, to the puffing them up with pride, there's two, tempting them to seek for power, and authority. So there, there's probably a distinction between those two, but perhaps not. But power, authority, and riches, and vain things of the world. So it's just like check, check, check. These are the check boxes or the ingredients as Satan stirs the pot and causes people to apostatize. 
And thus Satan did lead away the hearts of the people to do all manner of iniquity. Therefore they had enjoyed peace but a few years. This is, this is talking about the church. It's always talking about the church, okay? Um, and thus in the commencement of the 30th year, the people having been delivered up for the space of a long time to be carried about by the temptations of the devil, uh, whithersoever he desired to carry them and to do whatever iniquity he desired they should should. And thus, in the commencement of the 30th year, they were in a state of awful wickedness. Now listen to this, verse 18. Now they did not sin ignorantly, for they knew the will of God concerning them, for it had been taught unto them, therefore they did willfully rebel against God. I submit that many, many people in the church uh, that are wanting to identify as this or that or the other thing are willfully rebelling against God. They've been taught. They know. They know what's right and wrong, and they're willfully rebelling. But then it goes. Now, you could say, well, the church is in apostasy in this, and, and they'd be correct. But does that mean leadership is in apostasy? No. And there began to be men inspired from heaven and sent forth so inspired from heaven, I you could say those were small p's or, or big p prophets, but, but it, men inspired from heaven and sent forth standing among the people in the land, preaching and testifying boldly of the sins and iniquities of the people and testifying unto them concerning the redemption which the Lord would make for his people, his people. Again, this is the church, it's his people. Um, or in other words, the resurrection of Christ. And they did testify boldly of his death and sufferings. So we have his death, his sufferings, that he is the son of God. So the, the power of Christ, his, his sufferings, his death, his resurrection, and then his ascension into heaven. That's the, that's the doctrine of Christ. That's what, I've said this in other videos. That's what we should be focused on as far as doctrine instead of some of these things we say is doctrine. But uh, I... I you know, I get it. I, I know there's certain things that we say this is doctrine, but when we say it's the doctrine of Christ, it's very simple. And Joseph Smith said everything hangs on the doctrine of Christ. Everything's an appendage to this, what Christ did for us that we could not do. Okay. All right. Um, as, as these are events that are before Christ comes to the Americas after his death and resurrection in, in Israel, in Jerusalem, uh, I submit that these are very much the condition that we will have prior to his second coming to the world, right? And so I think we're, we're in there. Let's go to, I, I just want to, just thinking of, of Alma 4, because this is so, so good and so uh, the church is mentioned a lot here. Uh, uh, this is verse 6 of Alma, uh, Alma chapter 4, verse 6. And it came to pass in the eighth year of the reign of Judges that the people of the church began to wax proud. So sometimes we think, well, you know, Brother Palmer, <laughs> you're so critical all the time. Well, it's not that I'm critical. It's just uh, you see things. You see things happening. And you want to be a voice of warning, number one. And number two, you want you, uh, you, want you and your family and, and, to, and people that you love, which you're that people, I love you, uh, to, to be awake and aware. And, I, and many of you are more awake and aware than I am. But as we connect back and forth, then, then it, it becomes bigger and bigger. So if, if it can happen in the Book of Mormon where the church has issues, which we just read in, in 3rd Nephi, but, but this gets even more specific. So this is, this is around um, 84 to 83 BC, somewhere like that. But look, let's, let's look what happens. So this happens. This is a repeat. And it's almost always the church is what we're talking about, not not just the world in general, right? Okay, so I'll start again. And it came to pass in the eighth year of the reign of judges that the people of the church began to wax proud 
because of their exceeding riches and their fine silks and their fine twine linen and because of their many flocks and herds and their gold and silver and all manner of precious things, which they had obtained by their industry in all these things, they were lifted up in the pride of their eyes for they began to wear very costly apparel. It's interesting how uh, it, it's the outer look, isn't it? It's the outer look. What What's appealing to the to the world it's always the outer look that's why we have the all the billboards in draper utah <laughs> of of plastic surgeons that can do this and that and and the other thing uh it's the outward appearance that would be the costly apparel in, in these days and and all the fine silks and fine linen and blah 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 and flocks and herds and our trips that we take and our cars and our massive homes and all the things that, that we have. Okay, this is all in the church, mind you. Okay, now verse 7. Now this was the cause of much affliction to Alma. He was the prophet at the time. And, uh, and the cause of much affliction to Alma, yea, and to many of the people whom Alma had consecrated to be teachers and priests and elders over the church. Yea, many of them were sorely grieved for the wickedness which they saw had begun to be among their people, the people of the church. And they saw and beheld with great sorrow that the people of the church began to be lifted up in the pride of their eyes and to set their hearts upon riches and upon vain th the vain things of the world, that they began to be scornful one towards another, and they began to persecute those that did not believe according to their own will and pleasure. And thus in the eighth year of the reign of judges, there began to be great contentions among people of the church. I submit that is big time right now. Huge contentions. I, I bring up the, the, these differences that, that happen all the time, you know, be, between, you know, the, the roles of women and men and how that's changed so much. And it's, it, it just doesn't appear to be biblical anymore or, or scriptural um, quite often. And it causes huge divisions. You, you have the alphabet soup, huge divisions in the church uh, over that issue. Um, uh, okay, let's, let's finish this. Um, and, and they set their hearts upon riches and upon the vain things of the world that they began to be scornful one towards another and they began to persecute those that did not believe according to their own will and pleasure and thus in the eighth year of the reign of the judges there began to be great contentions among people of the church yea there were envyings and strifes and malice and persecution and pride even to exceed the pride of those who did not belong to the church oh my goodness so the pride within the church exceeded those that weren't members of the church. And it also, did you see the persecutions? The persecutions were within the church. Members persecuting members of the, of the church. That's where the persecution, I think, in the latter days comes from. I don't think we need to look at the world going, oh, you know, like, like, like the early saints, the latter-day saints, Joseph Smith, and the persecution they went through being driven, you know, from, from upper state New York you know, and then, and then driven to Kirtland and then Kirtland to, um, um, Missouri and then Missouri to Nauvoo and then driven to Nauvoo out and finally to the West to Salt Lake. So you just have this all over the map, uh, being driven and persecuted. We don't have that anymore. We don't have that anymore. Now, there, there's isolated cases here and there, but generally speaking, we don't have that. But what we do have is persecution within the church, and that's exactly what Alma 4 is talking about. Um, and, the, and verse 10, And thus uh, ended the eighth year of the reign of judges, and the wickedness of the church was a great stumbling block to those who did not belong to the church. And thus the church began to fail in its progress. I personally, I think that's happening right now. Uh, we don't hear that. Uh, all the numbers are great and everything is just rolling forward. But um, I think that's more of a public affairs, uh, public uh, wanting to put the best image forward. But I think uh, the growth of the church, real growth of the church, uh, Connor Boyack did a really good a video on that. Uh, it's 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 just barely like one percent uh, growth, which is virtually nothing, right? Um. So, 
it's failing in its progress that way, that way. And it's, it's, it's because of the people within the, with, within the church. So um, back to now to this issue of why maybe we're not hearing uh, prophets talk about Israel and Jerusalem, why the church isn't focused on that. I think there's a couple of different reasons. Um, first off, it's up to us to watch. It's up to us to look for the signs it's not for the prophets to tell us what those signs are. They've already told us. We, the prophets have told us, but they were the ancient prophets. They were, they were scriptural prophets. We're, we, we need to look for those signs ourselves. Now, many of us go to other sources other than the church to, to hear about things. Um, I, I'm thinking of Jonathan Kahn, a, uh, a Messianic Jewish, uh, he's a rabbi, but he's, uh, he has a Christian ministry. I think it's uh, centered in New Jersey. And he's amazing. He's amazing. His books are amazing. I've read many of them or listened to them. Um, I'm most of the way through um, one right, his latest one right now. Fascinating, fascinating. Um, I, I've taken online courses with One for Israel. Um, we talked about Israel 365 and the Temple Institute and all these these things. This is this is for us to learn. This isn't up. This isn't up to 15 men to spoon feed us on everything that's going on. Many of the things they can't talk about, or they would be. Uh, there would be protests at church at, at the downtown Salt Lake if they said anything pro-Israel. Can you imagine what would happen down at the church office buildings and everything else? Um, it's up to us to speak. Now, here's something that I think this just went past so many people, but I, I would say it was a, a, a year and a half ago, um, but the leaders of the NAACP came and visited the the brethren, and it was Elder Rasband had them come to a sacrament meeting, sit on the stand, and actually speak in sacrament meeting. Now, this these aren't necessarily um, ministers, you know, but but think of the implications of that. Here you have a prophet or, or, or an apostle, but that we sustain as a prophet, seer, and revelator, Elder Rasband, inviting someone to speak in a sacrament meeting. That, that not only is not of our denomination, but really isn't even uh, necessarily a religious person uh, in, in, the, in the sense of being an ordained minister of another faith. It's just, just a, an organization speaking in sacrament meeting. Now, that should, that should have given many of us a clue that we should go outside of our our little boxes to get information, um, or, or we're just going to miss it. And we're going to go, well, Moses didn't come down the mountain and tell us what to do, so it's not our fault. It's not our fault. Yeah, you know what? With that, with all the access we have to so many different things and, and, and so easy to learn and to study and to see the signs preceding the second coming of the Savior, um, it's up to us, and we have been given the ability to do it. We have the Holy Spirit. We have access to scriptures and the scripture citations, the, the, all the resources, you know, the, the, the church websites. The, uh, I, I, it's, just, it's just crazy how much information we have. And then going outside of, of, of the church, what the church provides going outside of that and getting even more information. I, th I think it's, we do ourselves a disservice by saying we should only study things that come from the church. And, and Elder Rasband gave us a very good reason why. Why would you have speakers from the NAACP speak in a sacrament meeting? This is an ordinance meeting. You ought to pay attention to that. We ought to pay attention to that 
bishops and stake presidents ought to pay attention to that. Um, having having uh, outside sources to educate us, people that are way more knowledgeable about things. Now, church and church leaders have a specific responsibility of gathering scattered Israel on both sides of the veil, right? And that's the most important thing. We've been told that, and I believe that. That's going to be their focus. Their focus isn't going to be events that, that are taking place in Israel. That's for us to, to see, because that's really, really where um, we can be watching, which we are supposed to watch. And if we do not watch, we're going to be cut off. We'll, we'll be cut off. And it's not going to be up to the 15 men to be telling us these things. We are so lazy in that. And and I just get so frustrated hearing people go, well, I didn't hear it from the prophet. Well, you know, the church isn't talking about stuff like that. Why in the H are you talking about it? Well, why in the H are we having members of the NAACP speaking in a sacrament meeting? You ought to take the, the clue on that. We ought to all take the clue on that and go to outside sources and, and study and filter it through scriptures and the Holy Ghost. Filter it through the scriptures and the Holy Ghost. And then, and then we'll, we will learn and we'll study and we'll understand. The courses I took with One for Israel, the online courses, fascinating. I learned so much. It was so, so good. Um, this book I'm reading on, on uh, uh, um, uh, Messiah Ben Joseph, <laughs> that... that that the the mis that Joseph was, in fact, uh, Jonathan Kahn did a, a a bit of a thing on that, where where Joseph and, and sold into Egypt was was so similar a Messiah type, um, but but the the lineage of of Christ, his earthly lineage was also tied to Joseph as well as Judah, which really is fascinating because. It, it's a game changer in so many different ways because the, the people of, of the Northern Kingdom, the land of Ephraim, it's been, it, this book has documented how it was the Ephraimites that came back after the dispersion in seven something BC by the Assyrians. They settled in the region of Galilee. And so they're not really even Jews. They're, they, they are and were mostly from the tribe of Ephraim. And where did Christ set up shop? Capernaum, Galilee. Where did most of his apostles come from? Right there, right there. They probably had the blood of Ephraim in them. And then that's why he says, go ye into all the world and, and preach my gospel, calling people to repentance and baptizing them. So th these are exciting times. And I think this is where we get, we need the opportunity to go outside and we've been given that example by Elder Rasband and uh, look it up, check it out, sacrament meeting, NAACP. And I think that that will help us understand that we need to do this and, and that it's, it's not only okay, it's what it's necessary for us to see the signs of the times. And that's why I think guys like Jared and others have have all, you know, have have gone way outside of what information they'd get from the church to to present their ideas. So good for him. Uh, I think that's it for, for this video. We have really had some roller coaster rides with our little daughter, our granddaughter, Jane. <sighs> I don't really want to get into stuff because so many of you are going through so many things and I know your thoughts and prayers are, are there, but you know, she, she's really struggling. We have good, good things and bad things, but, um, spinal meningitis causes, uh, inflammation in the spine and into the brain. It can cause all kinds of havoc. Uh, and, and then along with the leukemia and the cancer treatments, it's just, you know, it's all consuming in, in one sense. Uh, 
but it, it creates a realism as well and a strong faith in, in the bigger picture of the purpose of life and the purpose of, of worshiping God and his son, Jesus Christ, and, and looking for redemption in both the, the spiritual sense of, of our, our soul as well as our physical body being re, re, uh, uh, rejuvenated and resurrected all through the Savior. So faith is strengthened, but hearts are broken, if that makes sense, uh, as, as we go through this. I, I can't tell you what the outcome is going to be. There could be anything from death to um, full recovery to uh, lasting major disabilities and everything in between. We just don't know at this point. Um, so we'll just keep, we'll just, we just stay the course and try to figure out how, how to balance everything right. Uh, other children, family, loved ones, the parents, you know. Grandparents is kind of a weird situation to be in because you want to be a uh, part of it but not overstep your bounds. And um, I'm kind of a, like I could, I could get mad at doctors and do all that. And I've had to just bite my tongue and because it's not my place. I know it's not my place. I know that. And, and it's not that getting mad at doctors is what I'm, what my purpose would be, but, but just, you know, you just want to do something uh, but there's been wonderful blessings and the people and you people and uh, just uh, the outpouring is just uh, beyond measure. So all th we are blessed. We are blessed. The main thing that we see and that we hope for is, is that this little five-year-old is not suffering. I can't stand to see suffering. You can't stand to see suffering, especially of innocence, especially of innocence. It's, uh, you know, just a small little way we get to, we, we get to feel a little bit. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, God bless. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.